Uh, we'll approve it tonight, sorry. We are. Uh, you are. Oh, we are. We are. are. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yep, I'm happy. Yeah, okay, I'm Councillor Street, you happy? I'm happy with the amendment. Councillor Reid, do you want to continue? Yep. Councillor... Councillor Cordover. So we're done, we're done talking about the... Um, Oh, you can talk about it if you. Yeah. No, I, I'm not interested in talking about the amendment or what. Yeah. You know the change. No, that's yeah, fine. that's the the motion on the screen is is the motion that's that you're right. debating. Yeah. Yep, that's fine. So my question, Mayor, is about um, 5.5. I'm looking at um, pursuant to the um, local government building and miscellaneous provisions act 1993. Council delegates the following powers and functions to the general manager and the director of environment, so on and so forth. So uh, this is on either page 85 or if you're looking at the track changes copy 74. So what page is this on? I'm on the right item, aren't I? Yeah, what Planning, page, sorry? Authority delegations policy. Yeah, what page are these in? 74 is the tracked changes. Thank you. Cheers. So my question is just about, in general terms, is, is there any significant extension of the powers and functions to, to the general manager? Is the, is the extension of powers and functions significant or is it a, a minor extension of delegation? Ms. Tullamore? Um, through you, Mayor, some of the changes, such as the other acts, the Electricity Supply Industry Act, the Water and Sewage Industry Act, are really just clerical. Um, it's just that it talks about that council needs to do it, and obviously we don't want to come to a council meeting for that. Um, the only other change, the only change that would get anywhere close to some significance really is that the um, general manager, so currently in, well, currently, before 30th of November, the Act said the Council may amend a planning permit, so that's called a minor amendment, um, and it didn't make any mention of refuse or approve or issue a permit, and then when they changed the Act to introduce the time frame, they did put that in, um, that you may issue a permit or uh, do a refusal. So this is suggesting that the General Manager has that um, refusal delegation where it can't come to a Council meeting. Uh, so it's the same as the powers he has for an ordinary planning permit. Okay, so I'm just trying to look at this through the frame of is this, does this um, further enfranchise councillors to make decisions or disenfranchise them, for want of a better term? And what would be your analysis? Um, sorry, through you, Mayor. Um, it, it is something that... It, the minor amendments changes didn't come with any extension of time requirements. So in a planning permit, you can ask for an extension of time to make a decision. So we expect the applicant to say, well, it's got to go to a council meeting because it's either a fuse or it's got three reps. We'd need an extension of time because the agenda lead-up time is so long to get to it. Um, but they didn't think to put that in, or they chose not to put that in for these minor amendments. So we can't ask for that extension of time to get to a council meeting. And to get to council meetings you know, a week and a half beforehand, so you're never going to get the assessment. You may not get the assessment time to be able to get to a council meeting because you can't ask for an extension of time. So the um, general manager would make that decision in that instance. Yeah, so I guess to clarify, that means it is disenfranchising councillors in the sense that because there's not enough time to get to a council meeting, now this new uh, provision allows for the general manager to just take care of business and just deal with it to instead of councillors dealing with it. Yeah, and, that, and that's how it did operate historically. So rightly or wrongly, it seems, we very rarely refuse a minor amendment. Um, and it, the, it was just made under delegations before, so I don't know that any councillor here would recall a minor amendment coming up to be refused. OK, so in your assessment, do you see any, any risk associated with that provision, or you think it's OK? I'm, I'm comfortable with it that it's the general manager. It will still have a report with it. Yeah, OK. Yep. Uh, now, uh, going back a little bit, just to page 72, and I'm looking at the track changes 60, item 60, that says notify an applicant whether the information submitted in relation to a condition of a permit is satisfactory or not in accordance with this section of the Act. My question was, are we, aren't, we doing that, aren't we doing that already? Don't well, we notify applicants if they're satisfactory or not? Um, correct, but it's just through you, Mary. It, that is correct, but it is um, not specified. It's just that the Act now introduces the words so the council has to do it. So we have to laboriously um, have it written in the policy to make sure that it's in there. Okay. So with some of the other Acts, just for your knowledge of why this is so specific to Looper, is some of the other Acts, which you'll see in the next report that I've got, just says all powers go to the general manager, but this is 
um, has been separated into different tiers of responsibilities. Okay. That's why it's listed um, the way it is. Okay. And then my final question was just about, um, in 4.7 it says, and this is now 63, page 63, um, section 60, about halfway down the page, timing of determination of compliance with certain permit conditions, and it says, it's recommended that the delegation should be extended to all staff, not just senior staff. I just wondered whether you have any commentary around that. It's tolerable. Um, the, through you, Mayor, the, it just should be delegated to all staff because that's what we currently do anyway. Um, so staff look at the conditions and the plans that come in and we notify them um, straight away about what they need to do. This um, would just be a slow things down if you were to do it another way. Yep. And so am I right in thinking, that's roughly what I was going to suggest, is that isn't it true that um, by having all staff do it rather than just senior staff, you're removing a lot of bottlenecks, you're speeding up the process because all staff can, can make the appropriate Well, it's judgment. how it operates now. Yep. It's just that it isn't written in the legislation. Got it. Okay. Thanks very much.